Hello, it's Thursday, and today I'm making a Velociraptor. There is going to be an armature wire skeleton to help support the size of the raptor, and then I'll be layering crochet over the top to build the base pieces, then add details, and then finally adding textures. Okay, yes, I know they are supposed to have feathers, but I've had enough of feathers to last me a lifetime, so today I'm going to be aiming more for genetically engineered theme park monster. But before I work on any of that, I need to work out the proportions of my dinosaur. So I need to start by working out how big I can go, and that always comes down to working out how small I can make the smallest piece, which in this case I think is going to be the teeth. I'm going to start by just making a tooth in acrylic and just seeing kind of what size we're dealing with, and we'll go from there. So with my acrylic I worked up a magic ring of four, mostly because I promised myself that I would never make myself do repetitive parts any smaller than that ever again. And with these teeth I knew I was going to make at least a couple of dozen of them, so... We want to be sane at the end of this process. <laughs> so there is my acrylic tooth, which seems like a really small piece, but then the idea of even 12 of those, which is on the low end of what I think this is going to need, I just think that they're too large and too goofy looking. Now in a recent video I tried out mercerized cotton, and I just so happened to have procured some in some white. So you can see that uh. The difference in the strands there, the top is the acrylic and the bottom is the cotton. So I think I'm going to try making that same pattern out of my cotton and just see if I think that will work because if I can get basically this tooth shape even two-thirds of the size I think we'll really be onto something there. <laughs> and I'm going down to a two and a half millimeter hook as well mostly because that's all I have here at the moment. <laughs> So there is a close-up review of the size difference there, and as I suspected, we're about two-thirds of the size. I think it's fairly clear which one of these is superior. So I think that the cotton is actually a pretty solid way to proceed. So now I just need to whip up a dozen or so teeth to, so that I can just lay them out and just get a feel for how big the head needs to be, and then we can kind of really sink our teeth into our project. Somewhat ironically, teeth are dictating my scale. So I deliberately didn't write the pattern for the teeth down, as I thought that the inconsistence of memory was going to really help me get a little bit of variation in the sizes. However, once I'd worked up about 20 of the teeth at the larger size, I did make a few notes so that I could deliberately make a slightly smaller version to help fill out the front of the wrappers now. So what we have here is uh, 44 teeth, so we've got 20 in the larger size and 24 in the smaller size. Now that does mean that there's going to be 11 teeth on either side, top and bottom, which isn't quite as many as I would like, but it's, but it's a lot <laughs> and it's enough, I think. Okay, so with the teeth made, I need to start working on the base pieces themselves, which brings me finally to asking, what color is my raptor going to be? So just looking at my cubes here, I think I'm going to pull a green option and maybe an orangey yellow option and just sort of see which one I like. Now looking at the two color options I've laid out there, I'm kind of feeling the oranges a little bit more for this particular project. I use them pretty heavily in Albert, but I think that I'm still allowed to use those colors again. So that's what I'm going to go with. So next I need to start really blocking out the main shape. This. <laughs> so I'm going to probably carve this up into a couple more pieces. I won't try and do this all in one go. I know that I need at least sort of three separate pieces for the head at minimum, so that's where I'm gonna start. Then I make the jaw piece, which is basically the exact same pattern. It's just I'm going to like flatten it out and form it into like a scoop. That's kind of the, the basis for our lower jaw. That's a pretty good start. So with that done, I started working on the neck. Now I did end up resorting to short rows for this piece. I've grown less and less fond of short rows over time. It's because I really don't like the way they interrupt 
the otherwise fairly nice natural flow of the stitch directions. And plus there are just so many other alternates to using them, which is probably why I've never made a video on how to do short rows, even though I know that it's one that some of you are interested in. It's just when I'm in a pinch, like I am with this guy, they're the easiest thing to like brute force into a pattern to make it do what you want. I just don't think it's the most refined look at the end. So yeah. So that's currently how my neck is looking. We've got a nice flat piece there and then this is going to flare out into the body and just trust the process. We're following our diagram and everything is actually going fairly well to plan. And then we'll have this stuck on there. Now comes that time in every project where I have to decide whether or not I just leave it as a hand puppet. So yeah, just taking those bits back off again. Um, I do need to keep just building and building and building this piece out. I think I'm going to build this one piece up to, I thought about cutting it off in the middle of the chest, but with these short rows helping me swing around, I'm going to continue out and do this chunk of the body. And then just to make wire framing easier, I'll probably have it split into two pieces along this line here at the base of the tail. As you can see here, the curve of the chest is equal with the back of the neck, which is kind of like what we had planned here in the drawing. So now it's time to start flaring out into that body and just dealing with the grossness that is the ends of short rows. Like this is part of why I don't like it. There are things I could have done to avoid it, but I didn't and I ain't going back. So yeah, we're just going to learn to live with that. <laughs> so now I need to deal with my first little triangle. So I'm thinking a double treble should do the trick, but rather than just yarning over my hook, I'm going to pull up each one of the loops through the edges of my short rows here. And if they don't fit, I'm just moving on to the next one. So that's three down the sides and then one into the base. Got five loops on my hook. I have never done this before, so I'm really hoping it works. And then just sort of work it three. as a stitch. Okay, cool. So far, so good. And I am a genius. That's probably a Tunisian crochet or something technique, but that way you can see that the stitches don't have the gaps that you would normally expect like no stuffing's getting through there and i've still got my slope to get rid of that nasty triangular end and i love my brain sometimes i know this is probably not a new technique but it's a new one to me and i'm just really pleased <laughs> to leave this piece there with a nice opening for the tail and I'd just like to say that this body piece has used up almost an entire ball of yarn that's a hundred gram ball and I only have one other in this color so uh playing a little fast and loose at the moment but um yeah I think we're just gonna stuff it and see what our final shape is like maybe pin our other base pieces on See here my crab is holding my my pins in his pinces <laughs> and then this will go here like this and of course this will be full of teeth like something like that yum 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 so he's he's shorter and chubbier than my original diagram planned for him to be but that tends to happen because I get pretty impatient when I'm doing lots of really large repetitive rows and so I end up shortening them. At this point I'm just going to close this opening off a little bit more just at the bottom so that um this tail sits a little bit higher and then I'm just going to keep working on building up the base pieces so that will be like the thigh lower leg down to like a stump of a foot, the arm down to the stump of a wrist and then the tail itself and then as well as possibly the, the final mask piece as well. So yeah, we just need to keep bulk producing the pieces that we're using to build our guy. Cutie! Okay, so 
we've made a lot of the base pieces. Get him on camera there. But not everything is going to plan so far. Well, I had planned for this to be like a really cool screaming monster raptor thing. Looking at the body shape I've actually made, I've accidentally made him Cuddles McSnugglesaurus III. He's like the missing link between a Velociraptor and your Thanksgiving turkey. But just because he's coming out a little bit unexpected doesn't mean he's wrong. But it does mean that I'm going to steer into the curve a little bit and try and help it become what it's trying to be rather than force it into being what I was expecting. So basically no more wire supports. We're going to throw those out entirely and any additional textures or details I add, I'm going to be trying to hit a, like cute and adorable notes as opposed to cool or scary notes. And I promise I'll make it up to you later. But that, that isn't even all. So in the making of these pieces, I went through almost two full balls of this color here, this peachy tone. And I only have this much left, which looks like a lot, but it isn't. It isn't a lot. So I tried to go to Spotlight to get some more of this color. And they, of course, this is like basically the one color that they didn't have in stock. And at that point I kind of started to panic. And so I went to Big W and tried to see if they had like a similar color in stock and no, no dice. But then I went to Kmart and again, they didn't have yarn that matched, but what they did have was paint. And I'm going to try and use this to save the day, particularly this color here. I've never painted on yarn before, but I think it'll work. So using my next darkest shade, I stitched up a small swatch and tried painting a couple of different colors onto it. General disclaimer, this is acrylic paint, not fabric paint. I have no idea how it's going to react in a washing machine or in the long term. I'm not saying that you should use this for your own projects. I'm making this decision because I don't care how it will react in a washing machine or in the long term because he's not for sale and I'm not going to put him in the washing machine. So make good choices. So as you can see there, that's the painted bit at the top. That's the original colour. That's the painted bit at the top. I don't really know if you can tell. That's that kind of how that orange turned out. So I actually think that has great potential and I think it matches that top side there pretty nicely with our project. So, so that is a decent solution as far as I'm concerned and it means that I can carry on and make the rest of the pieces he's missing because he's looking a little bit limbless at the moment. With that sorted, I could resume making the rest of my pieces. I whipped up some finger claws and combined them into hands. And then I made a couple of chunky legs. Because I no longer needed him to stand up, I could revise the proportion of my planned legs to steer into the Snugglesaurus aesthetic. Now I did make killer toe claws for him because it's iconic as a raptor to have those. And who am I to tell him he can't grow into a clever girl one day? Okay, so now that I've made all these pieces, the only thing left to do is to pin it all together, see what we've got and see what we're still missing. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is we've got most of his body pieces here. I've put him in a seated position so that I don't have to worry about um, him supporting himself. He can sit upright pretty easily, but I don't really know if I want him to stand per se. So the next step is kind of to assemble as much of the body as I can. Like, obviously I haven't assembled the face or the mouth. The teeth are still sitting in a pile on my desk and I haven't really resolved any of the eye stuff yet. So I'm going to get the body as put together as I possibly can and then we'll start attacking. Then we'll start tackling the head. It'll also give the body time to dry in case I do decide to paint it. Just to help the legs blend with the body a little bit more.
Okay, so there are the tail, the arms and the legs all assembled and on. He's really hard to fit in frame, but we're doing our best. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is paint them, at least the tops of the back legs. I don't think I'm going to try anything fancy. I think I'm just going to try and blend where I've had to use the two different tones of yarn because of the unfortunate incident of... I lost yarn chicken, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to dance around it or anything. Um... So I'll do that next, and then while I wait for that to dry, we'll work on the head. And just for context, it's currently Tuesday night, and this video I want it to go live in like less than 48 hours. So we're in a little bit of a time crunch right now. why I would go ahead and freehand it. It's just, there are so many opportunities for hours and hours of work to be ruined. Okay, but that turned out really well. Um, hopefully it still looks like it when it dries, but that was a risky move, but I'm really pleased with it. <laughs> just, just popping him to one side to dry. While I work on his face. general assembly is going pretty well. I need to anchor this lip down just a little bit better and I will definitely need to be needing to add like eyelids and that sort of thing. I think I'm going to continue the painted stripes move it over here uh, down the back of the head as well just to help tie it in with the rest of the body. The paint itself dried pretty soft honestly like it would probably flake off with a, like a lot of rough usage but in general I'm really really happy with how how that all worked out.
Right. Well, while I wait for him to dry, because he's back there drying, uh, I just wanted to have a quick little chat because I figure anybody who's made it to this point in the video is potentially somebody who has watched my content before or is interested in watching it again in future. And that is, there is two kind of major crafting events coming up in the next few months. So that is, of course, Halloween and that is Christmas. I've also been recently experimenting with bigger projects. Case in point. Now, I managed to get him done in a week, but it came at a bit of personal cost. So what I have decided to do that for the next two months, so that's August and September, I am going to be dropping back to just one video a fortnight. Um, that's going to allow me to do bigger projects. And it's also going to allow me to plan <laughs> and have time to like plan and brainstorm some bigger event type stuff, particularly around October and December this year. So it doesn't, oof. the lighting's really weird here right now. <laughs> So yeah, I hope that's all right with everybody. It is not a warning sign of anything. It is just, I'm going to be taking a little bit more time to produce some better content for you guys. So that's the plan for the next two months. Mm -hmm.